And now I have a secret tip for you on how you can unlock relationships with mentors pretty much anywhere and in any institution. My name is Randerson Cardozo. I'm a cardiologist in Boston, Massachusetts. I trained in cardiology at the Johns Hopkins Hospital, and today I work at Harvard Medical School. And in this channel, in the Meta-Analysis Academy, I teach you how to produce research independently, and with that, to transform your career through the publication of high-impact papers. In this video, I'm going to share with you how you can find good mentors, maintain the relationships with those mentors, and grow that relationship. The first step is for you to look at opportunities and the people around you. This may sound obvious, but especially as people advanced in their career, they start looking mentors that are um, at other institutions, prestigious uh, positions, guidelines, committees, and so forth. And yes, it is great to work with those people, but do not forget to maintain relationships with the people that are immediately around you. And here's a very practical tip for you in that sense. And this tip is going to go for, especially for whoever is starting Harding out, medical students, even early on in your residency. It's important that you find the right people to give you the right results. In the beginning, even more than the topic of the research of interest, it's more important that you find the right people. So how do you find those people? Look at their results. If you have in your institution uh, potential mentors that uh, have successfully trained others, that publish a lot, that have high impact papers in your own institution, even if the topic of their research is not perfectly aligned with yours, early on in your training, you should focus on working with the people who will get you results, who will teach you methods, who will help you develop your writing skills, your ability to publish research in high impact journals if that's available to you. So initially in your career, focus on the people, not so much on the topic of research. And there are two key reasons why this is important. First of all, because these people that have results, they will be able to later on connect you with others, maybe at other institutions, or then with the high impact people, with the world renowned, with the nationally known people that you may want to connect with. Because whoever gets results locally knows these people has connections. So you can, they'll be very powerful tools for networking in your career because they know the right people had results on their own. And the second reason why it's so important for you to work with a good mentors locally is because they'll know you in an in-depth manner. They'll be able to write you strong letters of recommendations. They'll be advocates for you when you apply for a position. They'll call other institutions. They'll call other people on your behalf. So having uh, world-renowned mentors, that it's, it's awesome, of course, but they may know you superficially. And sometimes it's preferable to have those strong mentors locally that are able to advocate on your behalf. So when choosing these mentors locally, look Look at their results. Look at the people that they have mentored. Where have they gone? What type of publications have they had? You know, look at their results and talk to those people. Find out if this mentor, you know, sometimes they're very prestigious, but they're not really good people to mentor, to coach you. Ask their trainees how they did or how they performed as a coach, as a mentor, as a, someone who will guide you in your own research career. A second point that's a very important one is for you to be of value to your mentor. Again, this sounds obvious, but you'd be surprised with the amount of people who get this wrong. What I mean by that is not only do you want to do a, jo a good job, a consistent job uh, in what is your responsibility, but you want to go above and beyond. It may be, for example, if you're starting out in your career, if you're a medical student, you may want to help your mentor, your professor with uh, preparing their classes. You may learn something from that. You may have skills that may be of value for or for him or her. Like you may have PowerPoint skills, let's say. You can help him or her with their classes. Or another important way you can contribute with your mentor as you advance in your research career is to review papers for him or her. So let's say that a journal, this is quite common actually, a journal will send an invite for your mentor to review a manuscript. Uh, him or her can be a reviewer for a 
a journal. And uh, good mentors, people who do a lot of research, get tons of these requests to review papers. And if you, your mentor really won't be able to handle that, you may volunteer or he or she may ask you to review papers, review papers for the literature, a peer review process. And in doing that, you will learn a lot, you'll become a better researcher yourself, and you will help your mentor. So doing things that are of value to your mentor are a great way to improve that relationship between the two of you. Number three, you have to be consistent over time. This is true for anything in life. If you want to leave wherever institution you are today and go on to ever higher places, that may not happen from night to day. Same thing in research. You have to do a consistent job step by step. You have everything that you assume a role that you take on the responsibility of doing, you have to do it well. So be free to say no. Think about the opportunities that are presented before you and say no when you won't be able to do them. But if you do say yes, you have to deliver. You have to deliver consistently. You have to deliver ahead of time. You have to deliver a good job. And with that, increasing responsibilities will be uh, handled to you, will be given, provided to you. And it is your duty to take on those roles with increasing responsibility and consistently do a good job. That ultimately lets you reach high places, get good residency positions, good research positions. Eventually in your career, you may become a professor or a mentor yourself. And again, that comes through consistently doing a very good job. So Randerson, I found someone with all these characteristics, but I've asked for opportunities. I've, I've sent emails and I haven't had the chance to work with this person. Yeah, that's correct. That happens unfortunately a lot of times when these good mentors are available in institutions, it, it, they are often not available because they get so many requests from medical students, from interns, from residents, from, from other colleagues, you know, to help them, to mentor them in their careers. And here I'm going to give you a tip, a very important one that can help you open those doors and unlock uh, the ability to work with these mentors. The secret is you have to bring the work already done, already ready, or at least in the final stages of execution. And this may sound paradoxical, like how am I going to do research myself if I don't have a mentor? But there is a method in which you can do that. That method, of course, is systematic reviews and meta-analysis. It's the reason for the existence of this meta-analysis academy, and it's something that I applied all throughout my career. When you learn this specific method, you can write high-impact papers, good, strong publications that will impact the community, the medical community, that will impact your career, and that will help your potential mentor. That is really key. When you have this method and you, you did the research yourself, you developed the idea, you wrote the publication, you did the statistics, you wrote a draft of the paper, and then you invite that potential men mentor to be a contributor. That's a game changer. It's a total game changer. That will unlock the doors for you to work with that person. And him or her having seen you as someone who executes, as someone who gets things done, will gladly accept that invitation to contribute and then later on start giving you opportunities on their research and then assuming that role of a mentor, someone who will guide you and help you in your career. So how exactly are you going to do that? It's really quite simple. You're going to develop your research idea with the specific method that I teach in the Meta-Analysis Academy. You're going to write that paper, you're going to get it done, you're going to write a draft, and you're going to send a very formal email, uh, potentially even asking for a meeting, or just being on, very direct and uh, on the email. I actually prefer this second method. The, the mentor or potential mentor doesn't really have a lot of time uh, or may not dedicate enough time if they don't know you yet. So be very objective on that email. What you're gonna say is you're gonna introduce yourself if this person doesn't know you yet, and you're gonna say exactly what your position is and your role as a medical student, as a resident, and you're gonna say, I have a very, a very strong interest in this specific area, which is the same area of interest as yours, and in reviewing the literature, I found this specific knowledge gap, and I applied this idea, this clinical question, and performed a meta-analysis in this question. And I have a draft here attached, and that draft would need to be as complete as possible, and I would, would like to have your contribution as a co-author or as a mentor in this paper. So of course, you'd have to work on the wording a little bit, but the, the idea is that, that you will give, that you will introduce yourself, that you will present the clinical question, and of course, ideally, it has to have a connection with that person, with what they do, and 
that you are inviting that person to contribute. Very direct, short, direct to the point. That's gonna be the most effective method. In talking about the ways that systematic reviews and meta-analysis can open the doors for you in your career and your doors with mentors, there's a really great story from one of our students, actually from many of our students, but there's one that comes to mind. We have a student who, uh, I think she was a fourth or fifth year medical student at that time, had spent all her years in medical school asking for research opportunities, knocking door after door, asking for guidance for mentors, and really had a hard time doing research until she learned the method of the Meta-Analysis Academy. And she was one of the students that first did a full publication, wrote a paper, and published it in a strong journal. And with that, she became notorious in her medical school. She started to receive emails from the dean of the medical school, from teachers in her school, asking her or suggesting ideas for her to do research with them. And this has happened to me in my career where uh, once people have known that I knew this method, potential mentors have started bringing me ideas, people that I had never worked with before and people that I had than work before. Mentors, once they know that you work, once they know that you get things done, that you have knowledge, they will bring you ideas. And this has happened to me and to my students. So if you want to have this experience as well, stay tuned in the Meta Analysis Academy. Share this content, like this video, subscribe to the channel. And with that, I hope that you and your friends will learn a method that will unlock the potential for research mentors in your institution and above and beyond.